I'm Steve Wilkerson, and I'm with Jim Saunders, executive editor of the News Service of Florida. Jim, advocates for medical marijuana let it be known last week in no uncertain terms that after the proposed constitutional amendment to legalize marijuana for, for use for certain medical conditions failed at the polls in the last election that they were coming back. What did they say? Well, this group is United for Care. They, they uh, you know, led the effort uh, this year to pass the constitutional amendment. And as you said, in no uncertain terms, they said they're coming back. Um, you know, they raised the possibility of, of doing something legislatively, trying to get uh, the House and the Senate to, to uh, pass a, a more expansive medical marijuana bill. Uh, but I think they even acknowledge that that's probably not likely. So that means uh, be back on the 2016 ballot. Um, they not, in a, in, not exactly in the same format and language. Right? Yeah, it sounds like the, the, the actual language of the amendment might be tweaked a little bit. Part of the issue this year was that uh, the, they, the language you know, addressed um, that the medical marijuana would be available for certain conditions, I mean, you know, cancer, those sorts of things. But it also had some sort of open-ended language that, uh, that the opponents really attacked. Um, in, and the attacks basically were that this could create, you know, open market uh, medical marijuana all over the place in Florida. And um, so it will be really interesting to see how they tweak this language to see if it tightens uh, that part of the uh, ballot proposal for 2016 so that it isn't as uh, ripe, if you will, for, for the attacks. I, I do think that whatever they put on the ballot is probably going to get uh, opposition, but um, you know, there may be ways that they can uh, change the language a little bit that would, uh, would, would help uh, you know, buffer the, the amendment a little bit. Well, I think they also believe that they'd have a better shot at passage in 2016, right? They're very upfront about that. That the, the political calculation is that in 2016, it's a presidential election year. There's going to be a lot larger turnout than there was this year. Um, they are counting on Democrats uh, to turn out in much larger numbers than they did for Charlie Crist this year. I mean, if Hillary uh, Clinton's on the ballot, got to figure the turnout, uh, Democratic turnout is going to be a lot higher. Um, but in, in, it takes 60% to pass a constitutional amendment in Florida. They got about 58%. So they, uh, you know, they came close this year. Uh, also, that number indicates that it wasn't just Democrats voting for this. There were independents, Republicans. Uh, you know, there, there were other people. It isn't just a Democratic issue. But so... Uh, you know, the turnout will be higher in 2016, and they're counting on that. If they could get the Obama turnout again, you know, a lot of young voters, uh, heavy Democrats, Democratic turnout, um, it, would, it would really help uh, get it over the 60% threshold. On to another topic. As always, it seems that gambling will be a big issue on the agenda of the 2015 legislative session. But this year, there will be more of a sense of urgency about passing something rather than nothing. Why is that? The Seminole Tribe and the state of Florida several years ago uh, entered into what's called a compact um, that essentially lays out what uh, games can be offered at Seminole casinos. Uh, and the state Exclusively, right? Exclusively. And the state gets a very large payment each year because of that. Part of that compact is going to expire in July of next year. And that part that is at issue here is uh, card games, like blackjack, that the, that the tribe is exclusively allowed to offer at their casinos. Uh, they pay the state quite a bit of money uh, as a result of that. I think the number is like $116 million uh, that comes, year, right? comes to the state because mm -hmm. of that part of this deal. And that will expire in July. So there is a negotiation that uh, actually started last year, or I mean earlier this year, during the last legislative session, to try to come to a deal to extend that, that compact. Um, but the, the interesting thing that's happened lately is that the new Senate president, Andy Gardner, has indicated that he doesn't necessarily see a need to extend it. Uh, he is from Orlando. He's very close uh, with 
Disney, which is a big opponent of gambling. Uh, and he has uh, you know, indicated that, hey, maybe we don't need to do this. What in the world would happen if Gardner, say, uh, the president of the Senate, stood firm and s said, I'm not interested in uh, extending this compact, and it became possible that that was the case, who else would jump in and what, what are some of the ramifications of that? Let me just put Well, if, if the compact doesn't get extended, uh, at least in theory, the state would start losing out a whole bunch of money that it's been receiving over the past few years. Um, Gardner has said that, uh, you know, the times are better in Florida than they were, uh, you know, in the past, and that maybe the state doesn't need the money. I think when it comes to doing the budget, there's going to be a whole lot of people looking at a pile of money on the table and wondering, do we need this money? But, but um, that's one ramification. If this issue becomes a, a major part of the legislative session next year, it is going to open up all sorts of gambling discussions. There is virtually never an instance where Ga one gambling issue is dealt with in isolation. That's because there's a ton of money involved, a ton of special interests. You're going to have uh, the groups that want destination resort casinos in Miami. They're going to be coming to the table and saying, "Hey, if you if you're extending this with the with the, the Seminoles, we want to build in Miami." Or in addition, you've got the existing paramutual facilities that also are going to want something out of this deal. One thing, for instance, is that the South Florida paramutuals want lower tax rates on their slot machines. So there's all sorts of potential tentacles this could have if the Seminole uh, Compact becomes a major issue. Governor Scott actually tried to negotiate with the Seminoles during last year's, uh, the 2014 session. Uh, in the end, they couldn't get a deal done. It kind of emerged late and... Uh, but uh, I think the lobbyists are lining up to try to uh, see what can, what can be done here over the next several months. We know they'll be winners. <laughs> Usually are. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. For more news about Florida politics and government, visit the advances section of our website.